In this tutorial, we're going to look at project settings inside Sony Vegas Pro. And we're going to find those both from the video preview window over here. There's a little icon here that takes us to our project settings. Now, you can also find this through the file menu. If you go to file, you'll see that you've actually got something called properties, which will take you to the same place. OK, so they're in both places. But I'm just going to click the icon here. And when I click it, it comes up with my project properties dialog box. And there's bits and pieces I can change in here, depending on whether I know what the footage is that I'm actually going to be using in my project. Now, if you're in the US, you're going to have footage which is at 29.97 frames per second. Whereas if you're in the UK or in Europe, chances are you're going to have footage at 25 frames per second because they work at different video standards. The American standard, and actually is in Japan as well, is called NTSC. National Television Standards Council and in UK and in Europe and around most of the rest of the world it's actually called PAL phase alternating line which is the 25 frames per second so your camera is going to be filming at a specific frame rate now the frames are the number of still images per second to give the illusion of moving images okay so there are different frame rates unfortunately the uh, the American one 29.97 is a bit awkward it's kind of close to 30 and sometimes in some applications it's referred to 30 frames a second but it is actually 29.97 and there are various technical reasons for that now you're going to import your footage into Sony Vegas and you're going to put it onto the timeline and you'll get an option anyway to match these settings with that automatic dialogue saying do you want to match the project settings to your footage and usually you're going to click yes anyway but sometimes it's good to just say look I know what my footage is going to be and I want to set up my project settings in the first place and that's where these templates come in and when you drop down you'll see that you've got a whole bunch of templates going from internet really small internet versions all the way up to red camera sizes so 4k 2k and some of the bigger HD settings including HDV settings, which is what I'm actually working at with HDV footage. So you've got a whole bunch of different templates that you can use and apply. And if you know that your footage matches one of these templates, then click the template and then say this button at the bottom, start all projects using these settings, and it will use those settings. And as long as the footage matches, then it's invisible and will just work through without any problems. But sometimes these settings don't match what your footage is. Now, say, for example, that you have what we call progressively scanned footage at 25 frames a second or 29.97 frames of a second. These are the settings down here, but they have got this thing that says 1080-60i, and you can see this is 29.97, so that's NTSC American Standard. And directly below it's the European Standard, the 50i, and it's 25 frames per second. So what's this 60i and 50i? It's simply this. When you're broadcasting television over the airwaves, when you get to these standards, you need to send an awful lot of information at 29 frames per second or 25 frames per second. And they discovered that technically it was very difficult to ship that much information over the airwaves. So what they decided to do was split each frame into two. So you had all the even lines. So bear in mind, you got 1,080 lines top to bottom. So they took all the even lines and they did that half a frame. And then they did all the odd lines and they did that the other half of the frame. So they're sending half a frame 50 times if you see a second. So you've got 25 divided by 2 gives 50. 29.97 divided by 2 is roughly 60. So what they're doing is they're interlacing it. They're showing half a frame and then the other half a frame. And then because of the way that screens are made, they've got a little bit of sustaining of the footage. They just hold on to it for a bit so that you won't see this flickering between frames because it's going too quickly for the human eye to notice usually. Sometimes when you've got a very fast pan from one place to another, you see a combing effect. And that's when you're actually seeing the interlaced. But more and more cameras are doing this, where it says P, 24P, which is progressive. They're not using interlaced at all. And if your footage is not interlaced, you want to use that. But there's not a setting down here you'll see for 1080-25P. I've just got the interlaced settings. So what I can do is I can select that and then I can change the settings here. So if I want this 1080i25 and I want it not to be 50i, I can go where it says upper fill first or lower fill first. I can go to progressive, none. And that now comes up and says custom and I can change its name. So I can call it HD 1080 25p. 
Okay, and now I know that that template is going to be HD 1080 25p. I know it's progressive and I can save it. Now I don't get any feedback when I click this button. I click it and I don't get any feedback. But when I look at my list right down at the bottom, there it is HD 1080 25p and it's saved as a preset that I can apply every time I want to use it. So I can just turn around and say, okay, start all my projects with that setting. So I can click that and I can click apply and then let's just click OK and as long as my footage matches that when I bring it down to my timeline and start a new project it'll be set at those settings however this is HDV footage so if I was to take this one say the boats in harbour and drop it down in my timeline and let go I still get the option saying do you want to set your project video settings to match this media in which case I would click yes and then when you go back to this setting here you'll see that look it's set up at HDV which is a completely different setup to the footage or to the to the preset I previously used and actually for me seeing most of my projects are actually going to use this option I'm going to click start all projects with those settings and apply that okay you don't really need to worry about most of these other bits and pieces most of the templates will set them up for you so you don't need to worry about them however I do want to just quickly mention some of these other tabs audio audio is recorded at 48 kilohertz which is a standard video settings there are other options but usually speaking, we're going with 48 kilohertz. These are for very, very high audio. 96 is usually the highest I've ever gone when recording audio, as in just audio. You can do very high sample rates. It might cause your computer some problems if you go high, but the standard for video is 48 kilohertz, and standard is 16 bits. That you shouldn't need to change those or play with those, but if you are doing some very high audio recording, some really high quality stuff, then you might want to change those to higher just if you're doing some recording of symbols and what have you and you need to get really high resolutions you do have the option to upgrade those there but the other thing i think is really important to say is where are audio files going to go when you've recorded them because you can use sony vegas pro as a professional audio editing suite so you could record all sorts of instruments and then you say well when i've recorded them where are those files going to go and it's important to browse to a place where they're useful to you this isn't useful to me so i'm going to go to browse and i'm going to go down to my computer and my d drive i think i've got sony vegas there and sony vegas i've got recorded audio select that and say okay and now i know where they're going to be at all times okay rulers are how we view time Okay, you can see that rule of format is 25 frames per second because that's what I do. And you'll see that the rule of start time says 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, etc. And it actually matches with this item down here. This is your timeline. It's showing you exactly where you are at any point in time. So this is how it works. You've got hours, okay, and then minutes, obviously that's going to be 0 to 59, seconds, 0 to 59 because it's 60 minutes an hour and when it clicks to 60 it goes back to 0 but this one here is frames and that's based on 0 to 24 if you're at 25 frames per second or it'll be 0 to 29 if you're NTSC American going from 0 to 29 or 30 frames per second roughly what it is so you can actually set up how you want to look at time and how you want it to be measured in your project and sometimes people turn around and say well you know what I'm looking at an animation and it's much more important for me to look at just say frames so you can go to absolute frames or you can say actually I'm working with film so you can go to feet and frames for 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter and you've got different options that you can select from here including samples which is to audio samples but the one that we want to go for or I'm going to go for is this one here which is going to be the 25 frames per second but if you're on an American machine you need to know if it's drop frame or non drop frame and you can actually choose the appropriate one for your footage so I can apply those and there's a summary I can put in a summary of this template if I wish so I can say what it is or what's going on with this project who made it copyright information I can put all of that and that will travel with the project as we go through so I'm not going to put any of that in because I don't need to but I'm just going to click OK and that's given me my project settings the other thing that's important to talk about are your preview settings and I'll talk about that in the next tutorial.